This is a video that I know many of my subscribers have been waiting to see. If you love rugged, still, truly yacht style motor yachts, then I have a feeling that you will enjoy this video, which is an exclusive feature for the Yacht Boy YouTube channel. In this video, we will be doing a full yacht tour of hole number one of the MMS 55 still trawler yacht called Sea Ranger. This rugged 17.5 meter trawler yacht built to HPI verification services requirements is a category A ocean class vessel. She was built for the owner of hull based MMS shipyard, a family run business which for the last 34 years has been building, repairing and converting ships and offshore work boats. To date, MMS has dry docked over 1,000 ships and carried out over 9,000 individual repairs on vessels ranging from tugs and fishing trawlers to cargo ships. But more about that at the end of the yacht tour. I was invited to Scotland by the owner of Sea Ranger to make a video about this beautiful trawler style yacht. So with my drone in hand, I made my way to this stunning and rugged coastline the perfect place to see Sea Ranger in action. Whenever I have shared images of Sea Ranger on my Instagram account, she's always attracted a lot of interest. So it was an absolute honor to get the chance to shoot some footage of her so that I could show you, my subscribers, just what a unique vessel she really is. And best of all, Sea Ranger is currently for sale. So this could be your perfect opportunity to acquire a turnkey liverboard explorer yacht that is just itching to take a new owner on some trips of a lifetime. So join me as we take a look around Sea Ranger and of course check out her engine room and her breathtaking wheelhouse. In a marina with hundreds of boats, Sea Ranger with her blue hull and tall superstructure immediately draws the eye. Despite her being berthed around a five minute walk from the marina car park, she stood out. She has a very high freeboard, a feature often found on her commercial trawler cousins. This trawler yacht was built to take on big seas and her imposing stature reminds you of this even as you walk by her on the pontoon. We will start this yacht tour from her stern which we will access via the swim platform. From this angle we get a great perspective of Sea Ranger's assertive demeanour. The swim platform has high staple rails which wrap around the entire platform. There is also a swim ladder located on the port side of the swim platform. Access to the cockpit is via a door that is located on the port side of the transom. As soon as you step aboard Sea Ranger, you really get a sense and feeling that you are on a much larger vessel. It was very windy on the day of filming, but there was no noticeable movement on board. The steel hull really does keep the boat remarkably steady. I've been on larger boats in less windy conditions, which even when tied up alongside, you can feel the boat swaying and heaving, but not with Sea Ranger. The owner told me that the owners of the boats which are moored next to Sea Ranger love it when she is tied up alongside because their boats become protected from the fierce southerly winds which frequent this beautiful part of Scotland. This is an escape hatch that leads down to the engine room, but it also means that marine engineers and mechanics can access the engine room without walking through the interior. Here is a ladder that leads up to the flybridge. However, the main access point to the flybridge, as you will see in a minute, is via the wheelhouse. There's also a handy place to stow your fishing rods.
The spacious saloon has excellent headroom and is incredibly well insulated from the harsh November conditions that are found in Scotland at this time of year. The bespoke table is neatly placed next to the L-shaped seating, which, when seated, gives excellent views both to starboard, port and aft, thanks to the large windows. I also really like the fact that the aft saloon windows can be slid open to allow extra ventilation. In the starboard quarter of the saloon is where we find the retractable TV. On the port side is a handy stowage rack for the life jackets. And now let us head down into the galley and the below deck saloon area. As we make our way down, I just want to take this moment to ask you to give this video a like. And if you haven't already, to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Every new subscriber and every like that I get really does help the channel out. So I appreciate your support. In fact, if it wasn't for you, my subscribers, I would not even be aboard this boat. So if you do subscribe, thank you. The handmade bespoke galley is finished to an incredibly high standard and has all of the amenities which you would expect to find aboard a liveable trawl yacht. Opposite the galley is another seating area with yet another bespoke table. You can fit plenty of people here. It is from this area where we also access the engine room, which we will check out in a minute. This boat was designed and built by her owner to navigate the higher latitudes, which has been reflected in the no-nonsense styling throughout the boat. And now let us check out the accommodation areas. Sea Ranger has a total of three cabins, one double and two twin singles. Again, the accommodation area was designed according to the owner's cruising requirements. First, let us check out the starboard twin single cabin. A notable theme throughout this trawler yacht is her headroom which, if you are tall like me, is a godsend because you won't have to worry about hitting your head on the overhead. This cabin would be perfect for teenagers and is used by the owner's children when they are aboard. The two beds are not only very comfortable, but are also very wide. And now let us check out the master cabin, which is found on the port side. Next to the double bed, we find a plug, USB power socket and controls for the climate control. The same arrangement can be found on the other side of the bed. The small heater on the bulkhead means that when the boat is not in use, then there is no buildup of condensation when the vessel is being operated in colder climate. And now let us check out the master ensuite. The sizeable master ensuite cabin again has plenty of headroom and also benefits from heated flooring. And on a day like today when the maximum outside temperature is 3 degrees, I cannot tell you how nice it feels to have your feet warmed up by the floor. I also think the heated towel rail is a really nice touch. If you're short of time and you and your partner want to shower together, then this shower can easily accommodate two people. But it's also great for long people like me who like to stretch out whilst having a shower. If any former shipmates are watching this video, then I'm sure you will love the white ensign duvet cover. Upon seeing it, I was almost tempted to pipe the side. But having not done that for 20 years, it was quite lucky that I did not have a whistle with me. I like the fact that this is a walk around double bed Again, it's not something you often find on a boat that is 55 foot in length, but this is a very voluminous boat. And now let us head back out into the companionway as we head forward to check out the guest bathroom. It's also worth mentioning just how wide these companionways are and just how much room there is as you move around the vessel. In the guest bathroom, you also benefit from underfloor heating, which on a day like today when it was three degrees outside is really appreciated. The owner of Sea Ranger actually built her because he wanted to spend some time motoring around Iceland. And I think that what you're seeing is a reflection of the fact that when you're cruising around in those kind of areas, the last thing you want to be doing is spending lots of time cleaning when you're taking off your foul weather gear. This boat was not designed or built for hosting lavish cocktail parties in the Mediterranean. She was built for serious all-weather cruising, 
during parts of the year when most boats are taken out of the water or kept alongside. And now let's venture forward to the last cabin, which is another twin single. Every bit of bespoke cabinetry that you can see has been handmade. When the vessel is underway or beating through big seas, there's no noise, no squeaks and no vibration. I also really like the fact that there's an escape hatch located in this cabin. Of course, an escape hatch is something that you hope that you never have to use, but if you do need it, is a complete lifesaver. Having been aboard a warship when there was a fire, I cannot stress how vital escape routes such as these are. The Sea Ranger is all about safety at sea, Peace of mind when motoring in isolated areas far from land is a priceless commodity. And now we have finished having a look around the accommodation areas, let's head back out onto the upper deck and head up to the flybridge. I genuinely do not think there is a more calming and relaxing noise than a boat moving through the sea. As we head aft along the port side past the tender, note the three large windows on the wheelhouse that give exceptional views when you are at the helm. And those forward raking windows really add to the character of this trawler yacht. The side decks are really wide and the high gunnels ensure that you feel really secure as you move about this boat while she's at sea. The walk around access means that this boat is also really well suited to a cruising couple and check out the wake generated by those twin John Deere engines as we motor through the sea at around eight knots. And now let's turn around and head forward via the starboard side deck. Here we get a great view of the large windows that allow lots of natural light to flood into the living areas. Note also the wheelhouse has a port and starboard side access door. The foredeck on Sea Ranger is used as her boat deck. And of course, it's also where one of the life rafts aboard the vessel is stowed. And now let us head up onto the flybridge. Check out this view of the stern. It really gives you a sense of how high up you are. This large storage compartment is used to stow the bespoke canopy for the sun deck. As you can see, this space provides an excellent area for entertaining guests. I really love this traditional radar mast. True to this vessel's heritage, it gives her a commercial type look. The storage area on the left of the radar mast is where the barbecue is kept when it's not in use. The owner was telling me that since the boat was launched, he has hardly had a chance to use the flybridge area. But that's mainly because the vessel has been kept up in Scotland and this year the summer wasn't particularly good. But it's easy to imagine the type of ambiance that could be had up here once you set out some tables and chairs, a few beers and get that barbecue fired up. But if this was your boat, what would you use this area for? As ever, let me know in the comments. The flybridge has a fully functional helm station which, because of the weather, we kept covered up. If you do find yourself up here on a scorching hot day, then the hardtop provides some excellent refuge from the sun. But just check out the view you get when you're stood up here. The elevated position with its 360 degree views is really impressive. I can imagine that it's the same feeling you get when you're driving your Range Rover through the countryside Although I would prefer to be aboard a boat any day of the week because you simply just cannot beat these kind of views. As we take one final look around, we'll head aft and check out the hatch that leads up onto the flybridge from the ladder on the cockpit. Being up here, you also get a sense of how Sea Ranger stands out from every other vessel that's in the marina. When you look around, there's just nothing like her. And here's the hatch that leads up onto the flybridge from the cockpit. So that concludes our look around the flybridge and now it's time to take a look around the engine room and of course the wheelhouse. Sea Ranger is powered by twin John Deere 180 horsepower engines. Depending on load and conditions, they push this steel trawler through the water at between 10 to 12 knots maximum. These engines are not only extremely economical, but they are also very straightforward when it comes to general day-to-day -day maintenance. Again, staying true to her commercial trawler heritage, this engine room is incredibly easy to get around and has plenty of headroom. 
Over on the starboard side, we have a really well-placed and extremely handy toolbox. And check out just how heavy duty her steering gear is. This is the sort of gear you would typically find on a commercial vessel, which of course makes sense because she was built in a commercial yard. Not only does Sea Ranger have two engines, but she also has two generators. Again, it's that theme of redundancy that runs throughout this entire vessel. It's also worth pointing out that if you wanted to go ahead and commission the build of hull number two of Sea Ranger, then rather than having twin 180s, you can opt for twin 250s. As we look along the amidships companionway, we're met with the engine room's fire suppression system. The engine room is also fitted with several CCTV cameras and the monitors are on the helm station in the wheelhouse. Her port and starboard fuel tanks hold a maximum of 6,400 litres of fuel, which is around 1,400 gallons. On the starboard aft section of the engine room is where we find the washer dryer. This is also where the escape hatch leads into from the cockpit. When it comes to her range, Sea Ranger was built by her current owner for coastal cruising and for short hops across the North, Norwegian and Irish seas. So her range is around 1,600 nautical miles. However, her forward grey water tank, which holds around 1,100 litres, could be converted to a fuel tank, which would add around an extra 300 nautical miles to her range. However, as I am sure many of you are already aware, converting a grey water tank to a fuel tank is not easy. But if the owner of hole number two wanted to, then it does show that the range of the MMS 55 can be extended. The Sea Ranger is also fitted with automatic fin stabilizers, which are above the kill. So if you did happen to get your tidal calculations wrong and you ended up on a soft mud bank or sand bank, then the stabilizers would come away from the encounter in one piece. And let's face it, most of us who live in tidal areas have at some point been there. But what do you think of the engine room? Let me know in the comments below. Next, we head up to the wheelhouse. In a minute, I'll share some footage of the wheelhouse in operation as we come back alongside from our mini sea trial. Again, all of the bespoke cabinetry in here has been made by hand and has been made specifically for this boat. That includes the binocular holders and the holder for the Aquaspec Lifebuoy lights. As you have probably already seen, the ship's wheel is stowed on the starboard side of the wheelhouse. Her rudder is controlled via this joystick. Of course, if you wanted to, then you could put the ship's wheel back in its position. Over on the port side of the helm position, we have a table large enough for paper charts if you wanted to use them. There's also plenty of plug and USB power points. As she is a brand new build, her helm station is fully kitted out with all of the latest navigation equipment. She has two large LCD screens for chart and radar relay information, and she's also fitted with a bow and stern thruster. The controls are conveniently located to starboard. Next, we find the monitor for the stabilizers, as well as the wiper controls and the engine throttle levers. After the captain's chair to the starboard side, we find the ladder that ascends up to the flybridge. On the port side of the wheelhouse, we find the raised seating area, the perfect spot for anybody who wants to come and enjoy the view whilst the boat is underway. My subscribers probably already know that the wheelhouse is my favourite part of the boat, and this wheelhouse does not disappoint. Not only is it kitted out with all of the latest equipment, but it is sizeable considering this vessel's 55 foot LOA. Anyway, sit back, relax and enjoy the view as our captain brings us back alongside. You don't get the sense of it in this footage, but it was gusting up to 25 knots from our starboard beam, but the joystick controls and the bow and stern thrusters made light work of a relatively complex manoeuvre in a tight space.
As already mentioned, Sea Ranger is currently for sale. If you are interested in acquiring a turnkey steel trawler yacht, especially when the cost of boat building materials has increased and you don't want to wait a few years for a new build, then this could be the right vessel for you. Suppose you are a qualified buyer who is genuinely interested in taking ownership of Sea Ranger. In that case, you can fill out an expression of interest form, a link to which I will leave in the video description. I want to say a huge thanks to the owner of Sea Ranger for inviting me to Scotland to experience being at sea on this stunning vessel. I would also encourage you to learn more about MMS Shipyard to understand better the commercial shipbuilding and repair heritage that led up to the construction of this trawler yacht. I will leave a link to MMS at the bottom of the video description. Thanks for watching, please don't forget to give the video a like and of course to subscribe to my channel. And if you've got access to a boat that you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, then you can find my contact details in the video description. As ever, I'd like to say a huge thank you to my channel members for supporting my channel by becoming a member. I'll be sharing some unseen footage with you guys over the next couple of days. And if you'd like to become a member of my channel, then you click on the link in the video description or click on the join button that appears underneath this video. The video in the top left hand corner of your screen is one of my videos that YouTube thinks you will love. So please feel free to check it out and don't forget to check out my other playlists. Until next time, Fair winds and following seas.